John McClain, Houston Chronicle, here with us on Sick of 365 Radio. John, the the NFL is is getting more and more serious about vaccines as cut down gay gets closer. Do you expect a player's vaccination status to to come even more into question if they're on the bubble and don't have the shot? Oh, absolutely, Paul. It'd be stupid if you didn't do it. And one reason is if you uh, – they can't say they're cutting you because you're not vaccinated, but they can say they're cutting you because you didn't play well or you didn't play as well as the guy they're keeping. And if you want to try out for another team, you've got to quarantine – for five days, just like last year. All of last year's protocols are in place. And if your team creates a forfeit, you lose your money and the other team loses the money and your team has to pay all the money lost from television. So it's an expensive proposition. I do not know why the union wouldn't just come out and instead of encouraging them, agree, we're going to protect you from yourselves Everybody has to be vaccinated or you don't play. John McClain, Houston Chronicle with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. John, they changed up the preseason a little bit, and there's now this gap between the last preseason game and the first game. Will, will that allow teams to not have to rush from cuts, picking people up right into the season? Does it allow them a chance to kind of, in, in a way, uh, marinate the roster a little bit before they play their first game? David, the reason they did that is it's a buy. And so teams are going to treat it like a buy. Another reason not to be an income boot, not get vaccinated. If you are vaccinated, you can take off for a week if your coach gives you off for all your hard work in training camp and preseason. But if you are not vaccinated, you have to stay, stay and get tested every day. And so what is going to happen, the rosters are cut from 80 to 53 on Tuesday by 3 o'clock. The next day, you can sign as many as 16 players to the practice squad, including four veterans, six veterans with at least two years of experience. Then you can protect four of them before every game from other teams signing them. And so I think teams will rush out to fill up their practice squads and the Texans case, everybody talks about this guy getting cut, that guy getting cut. I said, there's a good t- chance that guy's going to end up on the practice squad. And the only reason they would look for other players is because I'm guessing the general manager, Nick Casario, came from the Patriots, and there's got to be Patriot players who will be available that he was part of drafting. So I expect them to add some Patriots. Let me put it like this. I'm sorry. I expect them to add more Patriots to the Texans roster. So, John, what have two preseason wins told you about the Houston Texans? That their backups have played well. Like people said, well, the Texans didn't play against Aaron Rodgers and Dak Prescott. And I, I'm like, really? I didn't, I didn't know that. Didn't so we're supposed to discount everything they did. Against the Cowboys, for instance, they had five sacks and four turnovers. And of all the players that produced those, only one was a starter, Charles Amenez. So, And the offense was terrible because the Cowboys started eight or nine starters on defense, and the Texans' offense continues to struggle. But tell you what, Lovey Smith's defense, seven sacks, seven turnovers, two games. And I don't care if Dak Prescott and Aaron Rodgers didn't play, they still have some good players on those teams. John, are, uh, is anything new in the Deshaun Watson saga, or are we just still rotating around? What's this deal about the FBI? Well, that was his his agent said last week. The FBI had contacted him, and they had had him do the interview because they were investigating one of the women who sued him for extortion, and that was all he said. So there's nothing new. He came out on the practice field yesterday. He was not there today. And uh, I said they should have him come out there and fall and grab his leg and grimace and have to be carted off. And then they could put him on injured reserve for the season, and it wouldn't be an issue because they're still, I think, hoping Roger Goodell bails them out, puts him on the exempt list, which is a possibility. We wouldn't know it until next week. 
But if they don't, then they'll just have to carry him on the roster. Now, I think he'll be the third quarterback. He'll never play. He'll never suit up. But uh, they carry him on the roster and make him inactive every week. That's why I think faking an injury would be best for everyone. John, what are your thoughts on the uh, Jaguars in year one under Urban Meyer? Craig, since the schedule came out, I picked the Texans to win that game. I pick them to start two and one, and then win one more game against the Jets and finish three and fourteen. And uh, the Jaguars, the reason I picked them to win, Lovey Smith is a veteran coach, a long time coach with a defensive background, and I think he will have a real good plan for a rookie quarterback making his first start. And then Urban Meyer, I don't care how great you are in your in college football. When you're coaching your first NFL game and your first NFL season, there's a transition for period for you as well. And look at Jimmy Johnson's first season; they were one in fifteen. And so uh, I think I think the Texans will beat the Jaguars, but Jacksonville's favored by three points. Yeah, it's interesting. Go ahead, Paul. You got something? Okay. Uh, now, John. In the end, now this is a season which, of course, last year they found a way to play everything and they got through it and it was an incredible win for, for Tampa Bay. Is is there someone that's a dark horse team? Because every year there's going to be because of that deal where how many years in a row, like 20-something, four teams who made the playoffs won't and four teams obviously that didn't will. Is there someone in particular that maybe was down or has been down a little bit that you feel like is ready to, to come back and, and be a major part of the, the playoffs? David, it happens every year, but when you're trying to predict it, yeah, that's difficult. I would, I had to make my predictions for our our football section, and I tried to not even think about who made the playoffs last year. And I looked at it, and other than I always like to be different on my Super Bowl pick. That worked with Philadelphia four years ago, and uh, I can't remember who I picked last year. It didn't work, but. Uh, so I'm picking Cleveland just to be different. And I looked at the playoff teams, though, and the only one I had making a playoff that didn't was Atlanta. And I'm doing that because of Arthur Smith, their first-year coach, who did such a great job with the Titans. I have a lot of faith in him. But it's just hard to pick who's it going to be. Some people think the Chargers. Well, maybe so because of Justin Herbert. Uh, I know it's not going to be anybody from my division. You know, I picked the Cowboys to win the division, but I picked them last year, and I think they would have if that Prescott hadn't gotten hurt. So I think the Cowboys will and, and Cleveland will win their division. And uh, I think I can't even remember who I have the Browns playing, but it's not the Cowboys. John, this is a baseball related. I know all focus is on football right now, and me as a Rangers fan, I, I've forgotten what baseball really is. But uh, Carlos Correa and his status moving forward. I saw a note from John Heyman uh, that uh, Correa had mentioned it being his last year with the Astros in a recent interview. Is that is that the expectation around Houston as well? Well, I've never heard Correa say that, okay. but that's the expectation because he turned down twenty million. Yeah. He wants at least thirty million a year. They've been paying Justin Verlander thirty five. He'll be off the books. Zach Granke makes like thirty two or three. He'll be off the books. So I don't know why in the world they wouldn't play pay uh, Correa thirty million. They could have kept Springer for twenty five million. But we thought all along when he turned it down that he's going to be gone. He's healthy. He's having a really good season. Went through one slump. And I tell you what about the Rangers, you should be pumped up because the Astros can't beat the bad team. <laughs> and uh, so the Rangers may sweep them again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would just be so typical. 162 games, craziness can happen just because of the odds of so many games. John, thank you as always, my friend. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. And remember, second. Thank, thank you to John McClain. Two quick yeah. uh, college, two, one quick college football note since we started. We told you that Texas.